Hi, I hope you're doing well today. As you may know, I've always been a reader, but I have never thought about making videos about books until I discovered the wonderful underground world of booktube. In case you're wondering, my favorite booktubers include Jack Edwards, R.C. Walden, and drumroll please, the person who inspired this video, the book Leo. Wow, that rhymed. <laughs> I will be linking their videos under the description box. And just to be clear, of course, I do watch other booktubers, but those are just my main favorites. Just putting that out there. Anyways, I will be exchanging my current screen time for books that I will be reading. And I'll probably do other stuff in between because my current screen time is pretty high. Um, actually, I'm going to check it right now for last week. Yeah, as of last week, it is 6 hours and 14 minutes. My highest screen time being 8 hours on Thursday, July 8th. Wow. The apps I use the most are Twitter, TikTok, Safari, and Reddit. I use photos because I do like to draw, but that's pretty much it. We have a lot. We have a lot to work on, guys. Today is Tuesday, so I'll be filming everything, and then I'm going to show you the results all the way until next Tuesday. Okay. I just got off of work, and I just got done reading this on the way home, book called The Last Lecture by Randy Posh. If that's how you pronounce his name. I don't know if you pronounce his name. If you know, let me know in the comments below, I could be wrong. But might I say, this book was rather interesting. Okay, so the book is written by Randy Posh, who has pancreatic cancer. And if you didn't know, pancreatic cancer has one of the lowest surviving cancer rates ever. And since he found out that he only had three to six months to live, he has decided to give a last lecture to not just his students, but anybody that it's directed to anybody that has dreams. But more importantly, I think it's more directed to his children. Anyways, the book chronicles every major life event that his family goes through up until the last lecture. And then he goes on to talk about life changing lessons about life, family, and even define the concepts of like social status and things of that nature. And he also talked about a lot of different perspectives on how he was raised. Not to mention how he also talks about a lot how important it is to reflect on the past while living in the present moment. Though the ideas that he has in this book is very insightful, I'm not gonna lie to you. I would think that on the contrary, I have some doubts. The only ick I have about this book is where he has a short chapter named Don't Complain, Just Work Harder. And then he proceeds to talk about how the energy people use to complain could be better put to use trying to fix their problems. The concept was rather interesting until he got to his example. Out of all of the examples he could have possibly used, he used Jackie Robinson of all people, which if you don't know who Jackie Robinson is, he's the first black major league baseball player. He used him as an example on how he vowed to never complain about the racism endured and how he better spent that energy trying to be better than all the white players. I can understand where he's coming from when he uses the concept of don't complain, just work harder, but using a figure in history that is both before his time and is affected by different systematic complexes came off as a bit cringy to me. Overall, I just felt like that particular example was a bit loaded for what he was trying to say. The only reason why I gave the book the benefit of the doubt from that point on was because I had to I had to keep in mind that this book was written 15 years ago and the part about Jackie Robinson was very vague and he's not alive for me to answer or explain himself. Nevertheless, there were a lot of hidden gems in this book. My favorite quote in this book being, experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted. Because it gives such an optimistic view on failure. Failure and failure doesn't have to be sad. Overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10 if you're interested in reading about a dying man's perspective on living a fulfilling life. What are you doing, Mucho?
just got done reading this book on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. All, all I can say is what a fucking masterpiece. Literally, what a masterpiece. Where do I even begin with this book? Where do I even begin with this book? This book is about a son writing a letter to his mother who cannot read. Throughout the letter, he reflects and unearths his family's past, and he even goes in depth to his own personal experiences. Throughout the book, he confronts the complexities and ideas of race, sexuality, class, and masculinity. And he even goes on and talks about um, the complexities and the ex his experience of being an immigrant in a country where the odds are constantly against you. And must I say, although I do not read literature often, this is one of the most beautiful pieces of modern literature I have ever read before. I've never read anything like it. The language he uses in this novel is so obscure and twisted, but so emotional at the same time. The language is just so extremely poetic as well. I just can't believe how poetic he made this novel. And to think that this is Ocean Vuong's debut novel? I literally cannot, I literally cannot fathom the fact that this is his debut novel, like, how did you even prepare for this? All I can say is that this is worth the read. If you don't have to, if you say you don't have time to read, girl, you're lying. If you don't say you don't have time to read something like this, you're lying. Because this work is a literary masterpiece and I cannot wait to see what else he has in store. All in all, it is hard to get a 5 star review out of me, but I would recommend this 10, I would give this a 10 out of 10, especially for anybody who's looking for a novel with an interesting perspective on sexuality, race, class, and masculinity. Rainy day outside today. I just got done reading this book called Comfort Women by Nora Okja Keller. I don't know if I pronounced her name right, but I'll leave all the books I'm reading in the comments below, so that'll be okay. The book follows the story of Akiko, a refugee from World War II, and Becca, her daughter, who she had from that who she had by a missionary. When I first picked up this book, I had high expectations for it, being the fact that I've never read or heard of an historical novel being placed um in the era of World War II surrounded by comfort women of or more specifically the comfort women of Korea. If you didn't know, comfort women is a term that's used as a euphemism in Japan that they used to call women and girls forced into sexual slavery during World War II by the Japanese armies in occupied territories before and during World War II. When I first bought the book, I thought the book would be about Becca uncovering her mother's trauma during the era of comfort women and during the war. And although there was some historical context within the novel, I just feel like it just wasn't dense enough to be considered a quality historical fiction novel. And I don't want to spoil it, but I just feel like the plot that was given for the book was very misleading to like what actually was going on within the book and not in a good way. And though it was an interesting book, I found, I personally found it very disappointing. Overall, I felt like it was an okay read. It wasn't bad at all, but I personally feel like it didn't have enough substance or plot twist enough to keep a reader interested. I'd give it three stars or about a four out of 10, four or five out of 10. It was, it was just, it was just okay. The book was just okay. That's all I can say about it. Hello everyone. I just got done reading A Thousand Splendid Suns. I hope my mic is not too sensitive and if it is, I'm really sorry. I will try to work on that later. You're probably wondering, where is the cover to this book? And the answer to that is I bought this from Thrift Books and they sent it to me like this which is completely fine with me. I just wanted a hardcover because I know that I would like this book. Um, the first book I read from this author, um, Khalid Hosaini, I don't know if I pronounced his name right, correct me if I'm wrong. 
but the um the first book I read by him was this book called The Kite Runner, and I'm not even like guys. That is one of my favorite books of all time. You have you have to read it. You have to read it. I'm so serious. But before I get into the review, I just want to say that this is just my personal opinion. I just feel like A Thousand Splendid Suns just did not give me that edge the Kite Runner gave me. It did not give me the same edge. But that didn't mean it wasn't. That doesn't mean that it wasn't that great of a book, though. Before I get into this review, I want to say that this book could be very triggering for people that are victims of domestic abuse or any type of like domestic violence, um, which I un I could. I cannot relate, but I can understand and imagine how victims of those can feel. Um, and this book, as great as it is, has a lot of heavy sentiments of that in it. So if that is something that triggers you, that is this book is not what I recommend for you at all. Wow, how am I going to say this? This book is going to be very hard to tell you about without spoiling it. It's one of those books where it's, it's better to go in not really knowing anything, but I'll give you the gist. The book takes place in Afghanistan, um, and it's centered around a woman named Miriam, who is who adores her father, and want, but she is a love child of her father, and you know, in that part of the world, the Middle East, like getting having sex outside of marriage is very it's very taboo and being a being somebody's love child that also can be very taboo especially if there is already a formal marriage that exists between a man and their wives and one day when miriam tries to go see her father for the first time on her own account she gets into a lot of like trouble in her father's other wives end up marrying her off to this man and that's all that's all i'm going to go into there it gets really really crazy from there it's really interesting and i would totally recommend i really really enjoyed this book but i'm not gonna lie to you it did not give me the same edge as the kite runner and i and i don't like comparing books but from this author that's kind of what I expected. I wasn't expecting the same plot. I just wanted, it just didn't give me that like, that like edge, that, that edge of my seat type of attention. It was not, it, this book wasn't as much of an attention grabber. And I'm sorry if I poorly explained the book. The book is called A Thousand Splendid Sons. I totally would recommend this book. Um, and I really liked it, but I just can't think of a way to explain the plot of the book without giving the plot away. But yeah, out of the books that I read, my favorite, of course, I have got to be honest with you guys, the one that I like the most has got to be on Earth or Briefly Gorgeous because that book is a masterpiece. And the fact that I never heard of that book before until Jack Edwards recommended it on his other channel, Jack and the Books, um, I you should go subscribe to that channel. He has a lot of good content. If you if you are into books and you do not follow Jack Edwards, you are doing yourself a disservice. Like, but yeah, I cannot believe I have not heard of that book until he recommended it. That book was amazing, and I think I heard they're making a movie out of it. Um, A twenty four, of course. So you know that book that movie is going to be bomb. At least I hope it is. How embarrassing would it be if I gasp this movie and the movie is not even all that great? <sighs> But anyways, I am very, very pleased with this challenge and I would totally do it again because I really did enjoy it. And as crazy as this may sound, I really liked the um, A Long Time Away From My Phone because I was able to read, like this was the most books I was able to read in one week. Like I've never read that much before. And I wish I could do that more. I wish I had like the wherewithal to do that more and I probably will. Besides the fact that um, I have a Twitter addiction, it was pretty easy. The only app there was kind of like, like I was itching. I was itching to resist Twitter. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Don't be like me. If you don't have Twitter, don't get one. Don't. Or if you had a Twitter, don't get back going. 
Just, just don't. Sorry, everybody. My phone died.